If you are looking to implement AI in your enterprise or company, you must be thinking about retrieval augmented generation at one point or another because RAG enables you to provide your own data to large language models. Without RAG, it is quite hard to envision a serious production ready application unless it is just for chatting with the users. In this video, I am going to introduce you with a hands on demo locally with this very uh, comprehensive and I would say one of the best embedding model out there BGE M3. Not only we are going to install this model locally, but we will also be looking at what exactly this model does. And if you are looking to implement an embedding model in your enterprise or company for a production workload, which features you should be looking at and why I think that this BGE M3 is one of the best embedding model for all purposes if you're looking to implement something in your company locally privately or even for the uh, public uh, facing applications so let's get right into it before i go into the detail of what this embedding model is and why this model is important and install it allow me to give a huge shout out to mass compute who are sponsoring the vm and gpu for this video if you're looking to rent a GPU on affordable prices, I will drop the link to their website in video description. Plus, I'm also going to give you a coupon code of 50% discount on a range of GPUs. Now, before we look into this model, first let's look what exactly this embedding model does and what RAG is. RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. All it means is that you can give your own document for the context of large language models because all of these llms they get trained on a huge generic data from web they don't necessarily know about your company your personal or your custom information if a user asks a large language model a prompt about your company then or your own custom data llm won't have a clue so in your enterprise you definitely want your llm to have that context so that it would be better able to serve your user as per your own company's data and that is where rag fits in so what rag does is you give it your own documents it could be in text format pdf format or whatever then rag uses an embedding model embedding means numerical representation because all of these llms they don't understand text they understand numerical representation or numbers and that is called as embedding another word for embedding is vector so whenever you provide your own documents to these embedding models they first convert that text into smaller chunks divide and conquer so that it will be easier to handle then those chunks are converted into embeddings or numerical representations or vectors then they get stored in a vector store so that is done by the embedding model there are two key components of embedding models which come into play after that one is called as re-ranker model the other one is called as retrieval model re-ranker model is responsible for ranking the relevant text within your document based on their numerical similarity so whenever a user asks a query then re-ranker model converts that query into numerical representation goes into that vector store by using an index retrieves a similar sort of uh, text from your own vectors and then returns it to the prompt then it gets combined with the prompt of the user and then that whole thing is given to the llm and that is how llm gets the context and this is ret uh, extracted or retrieved through a retriever component of this model so in embedding model there are three major components in play one where we have embedding or embedder model or embedder which converts the text into embeddings then we have re-ranker which stores or ranks the text as per their numerical similarity and then we have a retriever model which actually retrieves this from the index so that is what is involved there in the whole pipeline now this retrieval is not that easier whenever user asks a query there are three types of retrievers which can be used so when selecting your embedding model make sure whatever model you are selecting uh, supports the kind of retrieval you want there are three kinds of retrieval and let me explain them in simple words 
फर्स्ट इज डेंस रिट्रीवल इमेजिन यू हैव अूज लाइब्रेरी विद मिलियन ऑफ बुक्स यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड ऑल बुक्स रिलेटेड टू ए आई अ डेंस रिट्रीवल सिस्टम वुड स्कैन एवरी सिंगल बुक्स कॉन्टेंट इंडेक्स एंड मेटा डेटा टू फाइंड द मोस्ट रेलिवेंट बुक्स इट्स लाइक अ थॉरो एग्जॉस्टिव सर्च सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू रिट सर्च फॉर ए आई इन अ डेंस रिट्रीवल सिस्टम एंड इट इज गोइंग टू रिटर्न हंड्रेड बुक्स विद रेलिवेंट कॉन्टेंट इंक्लूडिंग बुक्स दैट मैंशन ए आई इधर इन टाइटल एबस्ट्रैक्ट और चैप्टर सो इट रिटर्न लॉट ऑफ डेटा एंड इट डज एन एग्जॉस्टिव थॉरो सर्च बट इट मीन इज इट टेक्स मोर टाइम इट नीड्स मोर रिसोर्स बट द डेटा यू गेट इज वेरी वेरी कंप्रीहेंसिव If that is your requirement, make sure that your embedding model has dense retrieval. Another type of retrieval is called as multi-vector retrieval. Think of a multi-vector retrieval system like a skilled librarian who knows the library's catalog inside out. You ask the librarian to find books related to AI and machine learning. The librarian quickly retrieves the books that match both topics using their knowledge of the catalog structure and relationship. so in a multi vector retrieval system if we search for like ai and ml that returns 20 books that are relevant to both topics for example including books that explore the intersection of ai and ml it is sort of a targeted approach third and final type of retrieval is called as sparse retrieval picture a sparse retrieval system like a quick glance search You want you want to find books related to AI and get a rough idea of what's available. The system quickly scans the book titles, keywords, summaries, or whatever is available quickly, and that is what sparse retrieval is does. And it doesn't return many um, results, maybe five or ten something like that from the books example which we just used. In summary, again, dense retrieval is an exhaustive search that scans everything to find the most relevant result. sparse retrieval is a quick glance search that gives you a brief overview of rele- relevant topics or books or if you results multi vector retrieval is a targeted search that uses relationship and structures to find results matching your multiple topic whichever you are using so this is how retrieval works and whatever your requirement is go with that one now let's look at this bge so this bge m3 it is distinguished for its versatility and multifunctionality multilinguality and multigranularity when i say multifunctionality it means that it supports all three retrievals dense retrieval multi vector retrieval and sparse retrieval and we will do a hands on exercise we will install this and then we will see how to do dense retrieval and multi retrieval uh, and sparse retrieval so this is called as multifunctionality then comes multilingual if you are really um, implementing a global application or a even if not a global if you know if you are implementing a enterprise application it has to cater to other languages than english so make sure your embedding model supports multilingual this bgem3 supports 100 working languages how cool is that and third and final it is multi granular what it means is that it is able to process input of different granularities spanning from short sentences to long documents of up to 8k tokens and tokens could be words or sentences so this gives you a hybrid retrieval system and through this you can leverage the strength of various methods that offers higher accuracy stronger generalization capabilities and you can also use cross encoder model and because its re ranker is very very highly accurate because it uses by encoder embedding model which in return is bge re ranker which is embedded into it okay so i believe that now we have very uh, thoroughly and exhaustively looked into what rag is what embedding models are what they include why it is important to make sure that they are multifunctional multi granular and multilingual and then why i think that this bge m3 is a very good choice for an enterprise now let's go to my terminal and then we will install it in our jupyter notebook and then we will play around with it so this is my terminal where i am running ubuntu 22.04 and i am using one gpu card of 48 gb of vram as you can see on your screen first up let me create a conda environment to 
keep everything separate so let me paste the command here so you see i'm just creating a conda environment bgem3 you can name it anything it is going to create it and activate it like it has already done that is great let's install some of the prerequisites which we want there you go so i'm installing torch transformers and all that stuff and don't worry about the code i'm going to put all the code in my blog and i will drop the link in video's description let's wait for this to get installed and then we will proceed further so these pre prerequisites are done let me clear the screen next up let's git clone the repo and then cd into it and then we are going to install all the prerequisites within that repo so let's wait for it to finish and that is all done let's install our jupyter notebook and then i'm going to launch it in our browser and then we will install the embedding model and then we will see how to do the dense and parse parse uh, embedding the jupyter notebook is launched let me grab the command so this is where first we are downloading the model and in this example we are doing the dense um, embedding so you can see that we are using the dense here so first up we are importing the module from flag embedding and flag embedding is the repo which we just cloned and that is what is used for this and then we are downloading the model in floating point 16 to speed up computation and these are the example sentences where we are checking the similarity with the help of dense embedding and you can just use your own but i'm just going to use this will be compared to this and this will be compared to the second one so both are list of two items this is embedding one you uses the sentence one and then compares uh, and then we have embeddings two and then we check the similarity so let me run it it is going to first download the model and you see that it has downloaded the model almost there embedding models are normally they are small they are not that big so let's wait for it to finish and the model is downloaded and you see it has also printed the similarity between the sentences so first one is quite similar the other one is not okay so that was a dense one let's check our sparse embedding let me paste the code here and not only sparse but i'm also going to show you the lexical weights and lexical score so before that um when we say lexical weight what it means is that lexical weight represents the importance of each token in a sentence it's a way to quantify how much each token contributes to the overall meaning of the sentence so in this code we will see that the lexical weight output contains a lexical weight for each token in the sentences first and then we will also see lexical matching score lexical matching score measures the similarity between two sentences based on their lexical weights it primarily calculates how well the tokens in one sentence match the tokens in another sentence a higher score indicates more similarity and lower score indicates lesser similarity so first up we are importing the model um, library then we are getting the model which we already did again we are defining two sentences sorry two sentences here then what we are doing it we are encoding both set of uh, sentences using the encode method and then we are returning dense and sparse embeddings as well as lexical weights so all three things are being written and then we are printing the lexical weight it should be printing something like this this is what our hope is and then we will also print it by running it by the way and then after that we are computing the lexical matching score between sentences using the uh, le compute lexical matching score after that we are printing it out so let's run it and see what happens here so let me quickly run it so it has brought the data checked it and there you go so you see it has printed all the lexical weights here of the token and then it has given us the lexical score if they are similar or not so this is what an embedding model does behind the scene so of course in a day-to-day -day, you don't have to worry about it but just to show you that if you are not getting you know proper results from your data set maybe have a look at you know internals of embedding models of if you are using bge m3 to print out different lexical scores and running these commands to see 
uh, what sort of results you are getting maybe you need to massage your data maybe you need to clean your data which is most of the case in many times in production environment that is where the uh, devil is so that's it guys i hope that you enjoyed it let me know what do you think and if you are using any embedding model in your production workload in your rack pipelines please share your experience if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching